What is up guys? Last night I seen Black Panther Wakanda Forever in theaters for the first time and wow. Um, I'm gonna get into this film or the, basically in this video break it down my pros and cons with the film but wow. Let's talk about the things that I really enjoyed about Black Panther Wakanda Forever directed by Ryan Coogler. This is his second film that he's directing in the MCU coming off of Black Panther 2018. Now we obviously know the tragic loss of Chadwick Boseman. They had uh, they were weeks away from filming the film when he passed away due to cancer, and they basically had to reshuffle everything around. So we're coming off we're coming at a film without our lead. So we'll have to see how good it was. And let me explain to you guys this cast in this film, especially Letitia Wright, Angela Bassett. Are fucking phenomenal. I honestly think Angela Bassett will definitely be nominated for an Academy Award for this film. But Letitia Wright definitely a standout um, dealing with the loss of T'Challa. Same thing with Angela Bassett. It's, it was powerful and I that's what I want to get into especially what my next point for my pros of the film is this film really does honor Chadwick's passing in the best way it could possibly it, it possibly could it's emotionally pulling towards you and you can just capture the loss and feel the loss the funeral sequence towards the beginning of the film when the film starts off we see Shuri trying to save her brother due to the illness and she fails it's a lot of emotion a lot of negativity on one person to fail to not be able to save her brother and it really builds up her character arc but seeing all this they changed. Uh, I, I thought they were gonna do this, and I'm actually really happy they did. The Marvel, um, the Marvel Studios logo. When you see like in the beginning of the film, they they tribute it to all for Chadwick, and there's a message saying to our friend Chadwick. It was very emotional on that standpoint. I have to say though, they did pull that off the best way they could, and I gotta give Ryan Coogler. Kevin Feige and the whole cast thumbs up for that. But let's talk about some of the other things. Like I said, all the characters in this film were really great and the performances were really great as well. But I do want us to say too that Namor, incredible villain. I don't know if I like Namor a little bit better than Killmonger, but I love him as a villain. He's He's awesome. You understand his motives. You understand clearly that he does not seem like a villain. You understand why he's trying to go to war with the surface with the surface world it, it, it's it all makes sense and i love seeing his culture everything underwater i forgot what the place is called again but i thought they handled namor and all that cgi looked great there is an issue that i have to talk about with this film technically in the cons and we'll, we'll get to that now obviously if you could tell by the trailers shuri is the new black panther i'm gonna be honest did i really agree with this no i didn't know how i felt about shuri being black panther but I, after watching the film, I understood and thought it was personally handled really well. So Shuri's mom, obviously Ramonda, dies in the film, and she's got to come off of that and has vengeance through her heart to be a wanting to kill Namor for, which was a badass, awesome sequence. The the water war with Wakanda, the war with Wakanda and or with Atlantis and Wakanda. That whole battle sequence was fucking beautifully well done. And like I said, at some points the action is phenomenal in this film right but at some points i thought the fight sequences were even better than the first film we all know that the first black panther black panther film gets shit on with the cgi underground vibranium fight sequence with killmonger and t'challa but overall i think the action sequences were way better in this film and honestly a great score by ludwig gorison he knows how to score this film. He knows how to score almost a lot of films, I have to say. But uh, going back to Black Panther as, well, Shuri playing Black Panther, or being Black Panther, taking up the mantle, I enjoyed it. It worked for me, and I understood it. From an outside look, just watching the trailers, or just hearing that, oh, she's going to be the new Black Panther, I don't know how I could have saw that working, but after watching this film, I understood, and I personally, it worked for me. Now let's get into the cons. I really enjoyed Riri Williams in this film as Ironheart. I thought her character is awesome and I cannot wait to watch her Disney Plus show, correct? But the Ironheart suit, final suit design in this film does not look good whatsoever. And the CGI is pretty good in this film, but 
in the final battle sequence, it does not look good. I keep popping back and forth. I'm checking to see if my battery's dying on my camera. But the Ironheart suit eh, didn't look the best. But overall, her character, awesome. I really liked it, and I cannot wait to see her in her own Disney Plus show coming up real soon, taking place directly after Wakanda Forever. And I gotta talk about this now. So I've been watching a couple other people on YouTube saying they have the same complaint. The night sequences in this film when you go to watch it in the theater, compared to the trailer night sequences, are completely different. Something's wrong with the L uh, LUD or the LUD or the brightness <clears throat> in the film, um, especially when they're putting it up as a projector. Something's wrong with it because when you're watching the night sequences, you can't see anything. I mean, explosions. People, nothing. You can't see anything. And then when it's day sequences, everything feels so like toned out, so stale and you watch the trailers and these sequences look beautiful on the trailers it's got to be a technical problem something happened with any maybe they got the numbers wrong with the brightness the amount of contrast that needs to be set for the projector in each uh screening because i'm not the only one that theater had that problem some other people a lot of people on reddit said the same thing that the colors just weren't popping at all even during the day sequences and barely could see night sequences so honestly i guarantee when i go see this either again maybe it'll be fixed by then or when i watch it at home it's going to look a lot more beautiful but that's really a criticism for the technical aspect of the film and i wanted more winston duke as mbaku in the film i wanted more of him he kind of took a step back in this film which i thought he would take more of a step forward personally i think he would have been a good black panther as well but i wanted more winston duke so that's a complaint and i'm going to also say this too the runtime of the film two hours and 40 minutes you do start to feel it and if this film had 15 minutes less cut off the runtime I think it would flow even better than it did but with that being said overall I really enjoyed Black Panther Wakanda Forever I think it's a great sequel is it better than the first one time will tell for me I really I don't know something about that first film I really do love a lot but overall I'm giving Black Panther Wakanda Forever a 9 out of 10 and I gotta say that this is my favorite MCU Phase four film besides No Way Home so far. They did a great job with it, I have to say. And let's talk about the end credit scene real quick. We find out that T'Challa has a kid with Nakia that is named Prince T'Challa after his father. That they kept him in secret to not worry about the, pre the pressure of the throne. And Shuri ends up finding this out. So we know what they're trying to do. And it's going to be probably about four years until we get Black Panther 3. And I'm sure Shuri's going to be Black Panther in Secret Wars. So honestly, seeing Prince T'Challa being his father T'Challa, but his son taking up the mantle as Black Panther, I'm okay with that down the road. Because you got to understand the circumstances. So only time will tell. I personally, though, with the situation with Chadwick, as much as I love him as an actor, as great of an icon he did as Black Panther, I still think you should have recasted him in this film. That's personally my opinion. Even out of his respect, I think that's what T'Challa, or I think that's what Chadwick would even want to. I get why they didn't, but besides that, guys, thanks for watching. If you guys seen Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, what are your guys' thoughts? Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.